talked about uh, position function just a little bit uh, for a, an example we did not too long ago. Yep. But velocity, uh, velocity is the rate at which the position is changing, the rate at which the distance is changing. And so we're going to say that the derivative of s or v of t is the velocity function. So the way we go from position to velocity is we take the derivative. And do this throughout the year. Well, one of the unique things about velocity, especially those of you who are taking physics right now, is velocity can be positive or negative, can it? And so we say that the particle is at rest. Like right now, you may say my velocity is positive because I'm moving to the right, and right now you may, you may say my velocity is negative since I'm moving to the left. Well, the fact is if I move from positive to negative, I have to cross over. So there is a time at which my uh, I was at rest. And so you would say that when the velocity is equal to zero, the particle is at rest. We'll define the particle moving in the positive direction when v of t is greater than zero. And the particle is moving in the negative direction when the velocity is less than zero. So our goal is to get through two examples today. And the first example says a particle moves according to a law of motion. And this is the law of motion. Where t is measured in seconds and s is measured in feet. And this is the position function. So if you wanted to know where the particle was at a given time, you could plug in that time. So for example, at zero seconds, where is the particle? It's at zero. At one second, where is the particle? It's at negative 11. So it looks like it's, it's moving backwards right away, right? Okay. And so we can do that to, to kind of figure that out. Okay. So it says find the velocity at time t. Well, in order to calculate the velocity, I take the derivative of the position function. So v of t is equal to, what's the derivative? 3t squared minus 12. Isn't it nice to be able to take the derivative that quickly now? So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, you will not use that as we move forward. We'll simply take derivatives like that. Okay, so it'll be a little bit easier. What I would like to do is I'd like to graph both of these. Um, and you won't be asked to graph them in your assignment, but I think it's important to consider the graph. It's going to tie into what we did in our last unit. But I'd like you to look at the position function as, as well as the velocity function. Well, the position function is a cubic. And if I factor out a t, I get t squared minus 12. That would mean that the position function is equal to 0 at what times? And plus or minus the root of 12, right? So I can generate a pretty quick sketch of this. Uh, the square root of 12 is about 3.5. There I have it. Okay. It's a cubic. It's positive. Starts down, finishes up. Now, if I look at the velocity function, the velocity function is 3t squared minus 12. If I factor out that t, I get a t squared minus 4. So, where is it equal to 0? Uh, at 2 and negative 2, right? So that's the velocity function. Now, somebody out there say something intelligent about the relationship between these two graphs. Okay, very good. 
Very good. So this is one degree less than that. Okay. Okay, yeah. So Andrew and Emu, you guys are right onto it. This is the derivative of this. Which means what's the slope here? Positive. So that means that at negative four, this graph should be above the x-axis. What's the slope from about negative two to positive two? Negative. So that means between uh, negative two and positive two, uh, this graph should be below the x-axis. All right. So um, right here, am I moving to the right or the left? How come? Am I moving to the right or left here? The velocity is positive, so I'm moving to the right. The velocity is negative, so I'm moving to the left. Yeah. Look. Look at your position function. Here the position is zero, and it's becoming more negative, right? So it's moving to the left because the velocity is negative. Then... It's becoming less negative. It's moving to the right. The velocity is positive. Okay? We'll try to work it out as we move through, but this connection between the derivative and the original graph is something we want to be able to uh, figure out. So uh, what is the velocity after three seconds? How do I figure that out? Yeah, V of 3 is equal to 3 times 3 squared minus 12. Which is? 15, and we need a label. It is a derivative. What's our label? Feet per second. When is the particle at rest? We've already identified this. That's when the derivative or the velocity is equal to zero. So when you look at this, how do we determine when the velocity is equal to zero? Negative 2 and positive 2, right? Now, we've already solved that. When the graph of the velocity is equal to 0, we've already found those spots. I'll write it out again. We take 3t squared minus 12, and we set it equal to 0. So 3 times t squared minus 4 is equal to 0, or 3 times t plus 2 and t minus 2. So you might say 2 and negative 2, but in our original construction of the problem, it says that time is greater than or equal to 0. We're not considering negative time. So therefore, two seconds is going to be the time where the velocity is equal to zero. When is the particle moving in the positive direction? Look at how we define it. That's when v of t is greater than zero. When is the derivative greater than zero? Yeah, so if you look, you can look at two parts. Number one, this graph, you can see that it's at that section where it's above the x-axis. Notice how that coincides with this graph. The derivative is positive you know, after it reaches zero, right? So uh, we would say from two to infinity is when it's moving in the positive direction. And we get to our last question. This is a big question, but it's asking about the total distance traveled and it's asking for a diagram. So I'll introduce this. We'll have to finish up after lunch, but uh, YouTube, you can't see me do this. So we'll Uh, we have motion of a particle. We have to look at its starting spot at the point where it changes and the point where it ends. And it starts at time is equal to zero, and that's always the case. And in this case, we're going to look at over the course of the first eight seconds. So it's going to end at time equals eight. Now, it might change direction once during that time interval. It might not change at all. It might change four times. But whenever it changes, you have to list that time. So at what time does this change direction? At 2. 
That's when the velocity goes from negative to positive. What's that? Uh, we, we're not talking about negative time. Okay? So, let's start by listing where it begins. If we plug in zero, now notice we're not going to go to the derivative. We're going to go to the position function. What is the position of the particle at time zero? If you plug in zero, you get zero. So the position is zero at time zero. Now we're going to figure out the position of the particle at time two. So that means I plug in two. T or two cubed is eight minus twenty four is negative sixteen. So does that make sense that because the derivative is negative right away that it's moving in the left direction? Yes. So that's at I took two, that's the time that changes direction, and I plugged it into the position function. This tells me where I'm at at a given time. Now we have to figure out where it is at time 8. So I take 8 and plug it in. 8 cubed, 512, 12 times 8, 96. So 512 minus 100 would be 412. So 512 minus 96 would just be 416. So they're 416. And that's at time equals 8. So notice the particle started here. It went back to negative 16, and then it went forward to 416. Yeah? 448 feet is going to be the total distance that that particle has traveled. 16 back, 16 forward to zero, and then another 416 after that. You see that? What's its displacement? 416, that's how far it is from where it started, but we're wondering the total distance. Flip it over, let's do a calculator example here. First, going to uh, look at the original function 4x minus 10 divided by x squared plus 3. And I'm going to zoom standard so we can all see it together. And I have it bold. Kind of hard to tell what happens there, but uh, the function looks something like this. We still don't know exactly what it looks like, but maybe something like that. If you want to change your window, you know, you can maybe make that y value a uh, you know negative four, but then go up to say positive one. Maybe your x value back to say negative two, and uh, I'll try to look at that graph and see if we can see a little bit better what happens. So it looks like it actually does cross the x-axis, and it looks like it kind of reaches a maximum spot here, and then starts to head down, right? A confusing graph to look at without a doubt. Okay. Um, all right. Well, it says find the velocity. So this is my position function. What do I do to find velocity? Derivative. So how do I take the derivative of that? Quotient rule. Derivative of the top is times. Good job. Minus the derivative of the bottom. Times the bottom, four, or top, 4t minus 10. But, you know, the quotient rule is something you're going you're gonna to continue to use that throughout the rest of the year. Uh, we distribute, we have 4t squared. 
plus 12 minus 8t squared plus 20t. So it looks like I get a velocity function that's equal to negative 4t squared plus 20t plus 12. t squared plus 3, whoop, 20 squared. Okay, <clears throat> let's think about this, folks. Okay. Ready to think deep. I, I just read a book on high expectations. It says make sure that you're asking your uh, class challenging questions, okay? Is this the derivative function or the position function? So at this spot right here, am I traveling to the right or to the left? Why am I traveling to the right? Because the derivative is positive, right? This is the position function. This is the original, okay? So when we look at this value at positive 1, you guys are saying the slope is positive. So that means the derivative should be above the x-axis, okay? Well, let's check to see if that's the case, all right? Let's look at the derivative and, and make sure that that's the case. They should match up. So I go to y equals, and I'm going to type in the derivative for y sub 2. And I have parentheses, negative 4x squared plus 20x. Thank you. Plus 20x. Uh, plus 12. It was a plus 12, right? Okay, and then divided by parentheses uh, x squared plus 3, that quantity squared. What's going on? Mistake. Thank you. Okay, so I've got that. Um, I'm going to change my window just a little bit because I already know what this looks like. I'm going to go to y max of 4, and uh, we'll take this graph now. So that's my original graph. That's my position function. Let's look at the derivative. And you guys told me at 1 it would be above the x-axis, and it sure is, okay? Now, it's hard to see, but does that ever cross the x-axis? If I go into my window, and I do a y minimum value of instead of negative 4, let's say I, I go to negative 1, and uh, I'm actually not going to look at this first graph at all. I'm going to focus on this graph. Does it cross the x-axis? Doesn't look like it does. Okay. It, it should. <laughs> if I go window and I change my x max to 20, let's try that now. Okay, there we go. So, uh, YouTube, I just adjusted my window so I could uh, uh, a y value of 1 and a negative 1 in order to finally be able to see this graph that it does, in fact, cross 0. So, let's do that, okay? Um, we're going to sketch that graph. It looks something like that. No. I asked Emma earlier, is the derivative positive or negative at 1? She says positive because the slope is positive. And sure enough, our new graph has a positive value there. Okay, very good. I'm just making a very rough graph, okay? So the question is, what is the velocity after 3 seconds? How would I calculate that? Now, watch this. If I look at my calculator, I could go to my table. And it gives me my y sub 2, which is where my derivative was. If I plug in 3, it evaluates it right away for me. So I can use my table to come up with these values as well. So it's 0.25 what? T per second. When is the particle at rest? That's when the derivative is equal to? So I'm looking for where v prime, I'm sorry, where v of t is equal to 0. I want to know where this graph is equal to zero. How do I figure that out? Second, calculate. Uh, no, we're going to do two. We're going to find the zero. 
Okay, it looks like the zero occurs right about there. So I'm going to go to the left of it, make sure that I'm above the x-axis I am. And now I'm going to go to the right of that zero, make sure that I'm below so I can get to that line there. Very good. And I'm not going to guess. And it looks like it crosses at 5.541. So at t equals 5.541 seconds. Don't do intersects, do zero. Now, when's it moving in the positive direction? That's where the derivative is greater than zero. Look at the derivative. When is it greater than zero? Between what values? Now, we're going to start at zero because we can't have negative time. 5.41, yep. You're looking where the derivative is above the x-axis, and it's for that, that region right there, until it crosses over the zero that we found, which is 5.541. That's where it's moving in the positive direction. Find the total distance. I need to consider the start, the change, and the end. At what time does it start? T equals 0. The end is T equals 8. And the change is 5.541. So I'm going to draw this out. Where do I plug in 0? Do I plug it into my position or do I plug it into my derivative? Position. Plug in. I'm going to go to my calculator so I can generate these values very quickly. If I press enter on the equal sign and go to my table, I type in 0 and I get negative 3.3 repeating. That's where it starts. So it does not start at 0. It starts at negative 3.333. That's at time 0, but it's starting at a negative position. Now what do I type in? I type in the 5.541, and I get, am I looking at y1 or y2? y1, because y2 is the derivative. So 5.541, I get 0 0.361. And I get time is equal to 5.541. And I type in 8. I see I get 0.328. And that's a time is equal to 8. Starts here, goes over 0.361, and then back to that spot. Okay. So how would I figure out the total distance? Yeah, time equals 8 at a location of 0.328. Point three six. The, so watch. Zero seconds, five seconds, eight seconds. It's it's just it's moving backwards. So these are the distances. So I travel three point three three just to get back to zero, right? And then after that I travel an additional 0.361, right? So that will tell me if the distance it's traveled when it's moving in the positive direction. How do I figure out the distance it's traveled in the negative direction? Yep, 0.361 minus 0.328. So 3.333 plus 0.361 plus 0.361 minus 0.328. Challenging example. Uh, yes, question. Right here? Yes, very good. 
this is that part where it's traveling in the left direction. The 3.33 is referring to this part, and the 0 0.361 is referring to that next part. So in order to get from negative 3.33 to 0, it has to travel that far, right? And then you get from 0 to 0.361, it travels that. And then you get from 0.361 to 0.328, it travels that. Okay, uh, book pages.